it boils down to when you know the God you serve. Because a lot of people talk about God because at the same time, sister and a lot of some other brothers. They might not they don't speak much of Jehovah or Yahweh or Seventh Adonai God or you know, because they stop at Emperor Isle Celestia. And even though I revere and respect and honor and give my praises to Emperor Isle Celestia. Break down your interpretation of Rastafari, because some people, you have, they know, they don't know, they have different views of it. Some people well, are Bible people. Some people don't deal with the Bible. Some people deal with Christ. Some people yeah. don't deal with Christ. So just something. explain your view. Because if Christ could have come on the earth, and Christ said, when he, when he was about to depart from the earth, he said, "I will go now, that another Comforter would come." Okay. Because when we have my understanding of a comforter, is someone who can be there to comfort us and carry us through rough times. So Christ departing him said, I will go now so another comforter will come. And when I read the Bible, it tells me, Revelation 19, that behold one who cometh with a name written upon his vesta, King of kings and Lord of lords, conquering land of the tribe of Judah. And when you read it in the Bible, it tells about the second coming of Christ. Because His Majesty, we, 12 tribes, embrace Christ, you know. You know, some of the Naya Bingi don't embrace Christ, but 12 tribes really embrace Jesus Christ as a foundation and His Majesty as a fulfillment of the prophecy. Come on, man. So, in other words, you cannot separate them. They are one and the same. Yeah. Come on. Come on, people. We must be, let, let, let us open our eyes to the reality of life. So, if you embrace His Majesty, Emperor Alice Lassia, he himself said he, he glorifies the Bible, he glory in the Bible, he said, the Bible remains one and the same. It, it says the word transcends our boundaries of empire. It was he who, who advised them to relate it, to translate it from Giz into the Amharic, that the people could understand it in their language. So he himself loved the Bible, his majesty is in the Bible. Then if the Bible tell me about his majesty, he tell me about the one who was born in Ethiopia. Saying Ethiopia is mentioned about 62 times in the Bible. So it tells me, it is the same Bible that teaches me about the Emperor Isle Selassie, it tells me about the Conquering Lion, and even, even um, Times Magazine come to, to admit the coronation of His Majesty in 1930, when His Majesty was coronated Empress Menin, and put to the, to the throne as Emperor, 225th Emperor of Ethiopia. This, this, um, coincides with the prophecy that Time Magazine could come and say, well, never in the history of humanity have they seen anything like this. People from 72 nations come to show their respect upon this coronation. And it was the Zion Coptic that really, the two the Coptic and the Zion Coptic that really anointed His Majesty. It's always a churchical order that really anointed the Emperor. The Emperor don't just get up, to some man, come out of the bush and say, yeah. Go and sit up on a throne there, you know. You have to go through the priest, priestical order. That it means you have to get the anointment too. Because when you go to Ethiopia, the people there will talk about Exabir. You know, Abatachanai, which means God for them. If you, right now, when you go to Ethiopia and go mention and talk about Silas, or God and them, some of them look on you like them and say, let me look in their language and I say, hey, what is he talking about? I'm saying, come on, come on, let's face the reality. The Bible says we can't worship no man that is born out of the womb fire. So, even though I love His Majesty and rate him and I'm giving my highest, because as the earth rightful ruler, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Conquering Land of the Tribe of Judah, elect of Jah, earth rightful ruler. But remember now, elect of what? God. It was God who elected him. The people try to leave God out of the equation and say, yeah, man. Oh God, that man. Someone go as far as to say, we are God because a man of right is God in flesh. But if you realize, eh, even though we're doing God work and things, we alone can house God's spirit. With all the billions of people that live around in the earth, we alone couldn't hold God's spirit. With even the beasts that live in the fields, we couldn't, them alone, we and the beasts, not even nature alone couldn't hold God's spirit alone because God's spirit gone beyond earth and beyond space and time and gone into other dimensions. As the Spirit of God, there's no limit to the Spirit of the Almighty God because remember now, 
if man was created upon the sixth day, look how much things created long before man was created, you no know, man? And how some man want to stop and say, boy, boy, boy. Then what about all them other creation we going before when God was created and all these things? And after God created, you know, he said, all right, you know what? Let just make man. I can't do image and likeness. Because this great creation where we make now, we can't just make, make all this wonderful thing and just make it go to waste. That's how man was created, you know. All of a sudden, man want to go on like it's all about him. God give us dominion, yes. But you have to remember now, Jack created us a little lower than the angels. You understand? Because there's higher beings higher than higher than higher man. So some people who don't have the knowledge, them just look at them big toe. Them now nah, look into the beyond. Some people don't even take a time and look up in the skies or in the stars at night to see the wondrousness of creation. To see how mighty and terrible. They never look give up on a mountaintop and look down into the valley and see some some terrible depths. A man can't drop in if you don't know where I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in Muta, Muta is a little controversial. Honestly, he's my brother and I rate him. But I think in many cases he's a little controversial. And a man can't tell me, say, you don't embrace the Bible. If you don't embrace the Bible, that means you don't embrace the book that gives the genealogy of man. It tells about from the first man coming right down, it gives us the genealogy of mankind. Then how oh, you gonna deny that? Even for the history. Love the book, no man. Well let me hear you say man.